Truth of the Spirit. I'm your host, Patty Bringer. This is day 32 of Daily Meditations for Lent. We will share personal revelations given on Saturdays of week four during Lent for you to discern and other contemplations to help you grow in closeness to the Lord through truth, repentance, and the Word of God moving into fullness within your heart. The Lord gave me this word. He said, My child, it delights me so when you hear my voice. Clearly, the mission I have given you requires a listening and obedient heart. Continue to tell and show my people how much I love them until they can see and know it within themselves. The time is near. The fruit is ripe. The harvest workers are assembling. Continue to dwell in my grace and joy, my beloved. On another Saturday of the fourth week of Lent, the Lord said this to me, My child, every day I call you to look upon my face. You shall find me in the faces of those in need. I'm there with them. They do not see me when their hearts are clouded with fear and pain but I am there. Seek me. The average Christian has not yet received my fullness. They know that I am their Savior and they trust in the Father's mercy. Yet the veil of the world keeps many from knowing me fully. Then the Lord gave me this exciting promise. In time, At the appointed time, I will reveal to all my people, those who turn from death and sin toward the light of Christ, I will reveal the glory of the Lord. Towards that day, dear child, spread the light of Christ, which is the flame of the Spirit. A different Saturday, the fourth week of Lent, the Lord showed me a way to step forward in faith. The Lord said, My child, the judgment in your heart of others fades away. It can be a barrier. Guard your heart against it. He said, The Trinity is with you, available for your breath. Listen. A time is going forth. It is critical that you listen. In the silence of your heart, you will hear and remember. It is your choice to do. Watch, the Lord said. Watch those around you. I will reveal my plan for you as you watch the needs surface around you. It will not be hidden nor obscure. Seize the moment for blessing. You will know it is time to step out, but you must choose the step. The Lord said, compare. Results will be assigned to you and to those in need, whether healing or relief, life or death, innocent or guilt. All these can measure the power of God upon the people that I love. The Lord said, continue. The manifestation of one does not cause for pause, but you should continue toward the satisfaction of the need of the next. Always onward, always on the journey toward me, with me. Even when you rest, you must be continuing towards the fullness of hope for your generation and those I love. The Lord said, breathe. Take in my fullness. Breathe out my fullness. It is life itself for the people. Fear not evil. Evil does not have breath. It does not have life. On a Saturday afternoon on the fourth week of Lent, the Lord told me, My child, the everyday routine of your life can bring about thoughts and dreams. My child, continue to reach out to those in the edge of darkness. Then one time during Lent, the Lord reminded me of the story of the egg and the bright light. An egg shown before a bright light reveals tiny cracks not visible before. 
What seems whole and perfect is seen differently when held before the light of Christ. As truth reveals those areas that need to change to be pleasing to God. The Lord said, as Christ comes into your heart, his light does not blind, but gently reveals those areas that need to be improved or set aside. When that layer is done, the Lord turns the brightness up to find the next repairs needed. A bruised reed he will not break. The Lord then told me how to share this memory. One time I was doing the spiritual exercises of St. Ignatius, and the meditation took me to the way of the cross. At some point, I recognized my own sin upon the cross and how Jesus suffered for my sin. It doesn't sound like much. But as a gift to me, the Lord allowed me for a brief moment to feel the pain my sin caused him. If it had lasted more than that brief moment, it would have destroyed me. The sorrow for it vividly continues even today, and it has been 10 or 15 years since that moment. Recognizing that all sin was taken to the cross and admitting that my sins that I once thought of as inconsequential caused Christ to suffer has caused me to repent of my past sins and to constantly try to obey his commands. When I fail, I more quickly come to him for forgiveness in the confessional. The Lord then told me to say this, Another conversion of heart was to recognize that I am not called to be self-sufficient. God calls us to communion with Him and to depend on Him and trust Him. The Lord gave me many blessings and natural abilities to reason and to do things that require intelligence. The one problem with being able to do things yourself is that you fail to rely on God because it's not a trait to rely on others. So, what did the Lord do? He told me to set up a website to post information about the radio show I was doing with my pastor, Living Seasons of Change. No matter how much I read and researched, the language seemed to be written in Greek to me. I could not comprehend it. Now, this was many years ago, before there was an app or a book for creating websites for dummies. I finally told the Lord, rather matter-of-factly, if you want a website, you are going to have to do it. The next day at work, I mentioned to a co-worker, a fellow Christian, that I was really struggling over setting up a website. And she replied, oh, my husband used to do that for a living. He can do it for you. And he did. You see, once I realized that my God is able to do everything and more, my heart changed. I trust Him in a new way. He provides for all my needs. And if He asks me to do something, He will give the grace for it to happen. He has provided many people and circumstances to help me grow closer to Him and to share His ways with others. Then the Lord told me to say this. Lately, I have noticed something else when I struggled with a particular sin. As I ask the Lord's help, He will place someone in my path that struggles with the same sin so that I can see the consequence of that sin upon others where my own eye has been blind. Meeting consequence face to face is a strong remedy for overcoming particular sins. What a loving God we have. One of the greatest conversion moments of my life was a visitation to heaven. It conquered the fear of death, not only for myself, but of others who follow the Lord and also helped me realize that I wanted to do everything I can to help people turn to the Lord. The Lord didn't give me the exact words of my story, but called it, a story of heavenly flight of the Spirit. 
Then the Lord told me to say this. The Lord placed many mentors in my path these last 20 years of spiritual conversion. Often, we take trips to conferences to hear the Word of God and from those on fire with the love of the Holy Spirit rather than spend our time and money on vacation trips for pleasure only. I have been taught by the Lord the true things of value in this world. It is not fame, success, or fortune as the world describes it. It is following the will of the Lord and spending your life in obedience as his adopted child, a calling to a royal priesthood and prophet and king. The more you share, the more you're given, pressed down, poured out. You've been listening to Truth of the Spirit as we wrap up the fourth week of Lent. This Lent, the Lord has more to tell us about sharing our witness. Listen to Him. This is day 31. Remember, if today you hear His voice, harden not your heart. Easter's coming. Prepare for it. Ready your heart. Come back tomorrow for more. With the Holy Spirit, there's always more. Amen. This is the Padua Podcast Network. Padua Podcast Network.com.